So we wanted to touch base, this is Lily, um, to talk to you guys about back pain. Um, back pain is something that, thank you, that we pretty much all go through at some point in our life and it's pretty debilitating and it's super annoying because it really stunts us from movement. And this is exactly the thing I wanted to talk to you about today, which is movement when we are experiencing back pain. Now, my back pain um, has flared up overnight. I actually went for a run yesterday um, and I don't run very much anymore, but I got lost and ended up, instead of running like two Ks or like one and a half, I ended up running six. Now, I was also feeling quite um, tense around financial uh, situations at the moment. And all of that has amounted into my sacral chakra and root chakra region. Um, causing my lower back to become really, really tight and flared up. Now, in from waking this morning, it was really, really locked up. And I've in the print, in the meantime, I've just walked down to the shops to just pick up some breakfast. And movement is really good. And um, all of my movement teachers are very, very big on um, creating this. Daniel Siegel talks about it in his book Mind Sight is neural mapping where we have inflammation or pain through an area and instead of being rigid through it, we soften through it. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of a routine here and now um, that I, I do when I have back pain now and it really eases it off. It, it tells the area that it's okay to soften and the rigidity starts to dissipate the connective tissue and the fascia. Um, they loosen their grip so that I then have more space between the area of the muscles and the body and the skin um, and the bones and the joints to be able to move. So when things flare up, we need to not be rigid through it. It's a soft movement where we can actually feel and go, okay, this is all right. So say with shoulder, I can move it slightly forward and back, but that, that's enough. Right? I, I'm not aiming for this huge movement because it's not going to do that at the moment, but you start really little and this is where I'm going to start with my back today. So um, the very first thing that I like to do is to check out what's going on. So um, that is very much coming into this four point kneeling position and being really mindful as I move through my cat cow side to side, I'm visualizing my spine and my vertebrae. That's not your ball. That's not your ball. Thank you. I'm visualizing my spine and my vertebrae separating here. I'm trying to create space in between each of the joints to really feel between the discs and noticing like right here, I'm feeling pretty stuck in this area here, but I'm like, oh, okay, it's okay, but I'm not moving myself through any pain. So I'm going to take you in real time through this. I'm going to spend about another 30 seconds or so. If you've got longer, stay longer. And this is going to be very, very um, accustomed to you. Okay, this is just to give you some ideas. Your body is going to tell you where it can and cannot go. And even if your back is really locked up, just be really little, be really, really smooth. Be, be super gentle, super loving. Rather than getting angry with our back pain, can we thank it, right? Yeah, that's what I say. Can we thank it for showing up so that we can then nurture our bodies and look after them? From my back, I'm then going to get into my hip flexors because they're very much interlinked. Now, again, this is very personal to you. I'm just going to start on my knees and step one foot through and just feel, okay, what's going on there? Feel the right, feel the right. And it's a little tight through there, but not too bad. So I'm trying to get some movement through my hip. And I'm not limiting this to um, any certain way. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to be really soft. And when you've spent about 20 seconds on this side, then bring that knee back really nice and slowly and move to the other side. Again, yeah, notice what you can feel through each of that transition and, and maybe go back to said, if you're not used to this kind of stuff, I'm quite used to now moving when I get back pain. The moment I get it, I'm like, okay, cool. I've, I've received a lesson today. I've received a teaching. Um, and I, I used to lock up and I'd be locked up for three days, not that long ago, because I used to get frustrated and pissed off. Now I'm just like, oh, well, it's showing up for a reason, you know? Maybe I was doing too much, you know, and I was stressing about money and things like that. And they, these things show up to teach us. Now, if that's feeling okay, 
you can then start to create whatever sort of movement feels nice it is slow so think about every single part of the body moving as one rather than separate and again, if you've got more time to do this kind of stuff, then take more time. But already, this is really starting to loosen up. I'm feeling a really nice movement through my sacral area, through my lower spine. It just feels really good to move. So I'm going to take two more. Again, if you have the time, spend the time. We're too quick to rush these days. Well, maybe not these days, but... We're very used to going fast. Beautiful. All right, from there, I'm gonna step straight into a squat, into Malasana. And again, if you're not, if you don't practice squat very often, please sit onto like a cushion or a block. And we're just trying to create space into the hips. And I'll just turn to face the front so you can see. What tends to happen, especially with the society wearing shoes, um, a lot and being quite common is this medial rotation. People roll onto the inner edges of their feet, right? So we have this problem where a lot of people don't have arches in their feet. Um, a lot of my, my teachings, all my learnings come from the Foot Collective and every single one of us has an arch in our foot. We have to learn how to use it though. So we have to train the muscles, the four layers of muscle on the underside of our foot to work properly because otherwise the connective tissue and the fascia tries to take the load and that's when we end up with things like plantar fasciitis, we end up with um, pain in our tibia, pain in our ankles, our shins and things like that as well because all of this fascia and connective tissue is trying to do the work of the muscles and the underside of the foot. When the muscles start to activate, they start to pull up and you start to see that arch in the foot. So when we come into this squat position here, we want to try and be on the tripod of the foot, which is the heel and the two balls of the foot, which I've got a total separate video on with that. And we're just trying to hold this squat for, you ideally want about five minutes a day. I'm just going to hold this for about a minute today. Um, this is feeling really good. And it's one of the best things for your spine as well. Because we're opening up into the hips, we're creating space so that the vertebrae and the spine can decompress. You can move your squat a little bit. That's fine. You can even do stuff like this. There's no right or wrong. I'm just going to stay here today because that feels really nice in my body. So I'm going to hold here for five four, three, two, and then however you get down to the ground, we're gonna to start to create a little movement through our hips. The right foot is um, in front of the left quad, and we're just gonna use our core to kind of swivel. And we don't even have to move the feet much at all. It's just this um, rocking side to side, and you'll pull the belly in towards the backbone. And we're creating a nice little movement and mobility through the hips. So as I said, everything is connected. Um, you know, we have to look at other things um, when when our bodies uh, have these um, moments where when things don't work as well as they should, or we we lock up like what's happened in my back today. Um, as I said, like I, I running does not suit my body at all. I ran for many years and. I was always in pain or injured and things like that. Some people can run, some people can't run as well. And it's just working with what works for your body. So movement very much suits my body and yoga more than running does. Cool. So now that we've done that, we're just going to now create some movement through the groin. And I understand that some of you with back pain, folding forward is scary. So you don't have to do this one if that doesn't feel right for you. So what we're working through here, what we're working through, I think we're slipping for, huh? Is the breath. So inhale, heels together, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, and then exhale, fold. And you're just being nice and soft here. Inhale, heels together, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, legs out, and exhale, fold forward. Inhale, heels together, exhale, fold forward. Go a couple more of those. Inhale, heels together if you can, and exhale, fold forward. Inhale, heels together, and exhale, fold forward. We'll go one more of these. Inhale, heels together, and then exhale, fold forward. All right, beautiful. It's a great one to just get that movement happening into the inner thighs. From here, we're going to come up to stand. I like to stand. 
by coming into a downward facing dog first and then walking my hand back to my feet. Again, if this doesn't roll for you with back pain, please just rest your elbows on your knees, but a dangle is one of the best things. So we're lengthening the hamstrings here, right? And again, trying to loosen off that tension, that grip, and we're decompressing the spine. So if you can stay here, stay. If not, rest the elbows on the, um, on the knees, and we're staying here for five, four, three, two, one. Now, if you are suffering any lower back issues, use your hands, zip the belly to your spine, slowly roll up like you're pressing your spine on the wall. And then from here, all we're just going to do is create a little movement through the hip. So I want to try and get things moving. So I'm just focusing on a little figure of eight pattern here. I'm lifting one hip bone, it's going down and around, and then I'm lifting the other. And again, I can definitely feel this through my spine, but it's not painful. I'm just it's actually creating some space. It actually feels really nice. And you can even involve the feet. There's no right or wrong here. So I just want you to try and um, work with what feels nice for you. So it's just this swiveling. Again, we're just trying to create some movement through that sacral area. You'll also feel this in your obliques as well. So no right or wrong with this. Try to keep your upper body soft. We'll go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We're going to do some hip circles now. So moving around and notice that I'm leaning forward. And as I come back, I'm actually going to do a bit of a back bend here, but not much today. So it's um, not about pushing the back bend. I'm like, okay, to the right, to the right, to the right. Oh, that's about where I'm going to go to today, and that's okay. And then the more I'm doing these, the more I'm working through this little sort of hula hoop kind of movement, I kind of just feel a little bit more space. And it's it's really intuitive. It's intuitive movement. So, so I'm very much working through my root chakra and my sacral chakra. Um, and this very much ties in so that I've got a program that's starting very soon called Moving With Your Chakras. So understanding where we're feeling pain or feeling tension and doing exactly this, going, okay, how do I get this area feeling better? And understanding as of where the pain is coming from, like what's, what's the root cause? And I said, I've been quite stressed and over financial uh, situations lately, obviously with the coronavirus and, you know, making some payments that were laid and things like that as well. And that holds straight in my lower back. It's a center for our emotions. Just change directions if you haven't already. And that starts to create tension and things start to lock up in that region. And then and combine things like a, a run that I just did yesterday in the cold, like for 6Ks, when I don't run anymore, the, the back's just gone, yeah, that was too much. So when we start to understand what's going on or why our body reacts the way it does, we can actually then do this kind of stuff to nurture through it and get it moving better, you know. I've got so much better movement now than what I did when I first started. Um, just by like giving this, uh, this teaching to my hips and my lower back to go, it's okay, it's all right to move. And we're moving with love and compassion. Good. All right, and we're just going to now just create a little bit more movement. Now that I'm, I've been moving my spine, it's actually feeling pretty good to do this. There's no locking up. I'm actually quite, um, so there's a little bit of back bend there, which wasn't, wasn't painful, it's not. So the, this can be as big, as little as you like. We're trying to keep everything loose here. I'm trying to loosen my hips, I'm trying to loosen my shoulders. It feels really, really good. So you'll notice, I think Holly mentioned this in the new way, um, and they do, dogs, animals, all animals shake when they are faced with stress. Afterwards, they shake it off, you know? And we, as humans, we don't do that as much. It's not often you'll see somebody in the street just like, ugh, getting it out. But it's so good for us. So we're gonna go for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, 
and one. And now I'm just creating two fists and I'm moving up my body around and I'm trying to loosen areas here. So, especially within the back end, trying to get into the back of the kidneys, lower spine, glutes. You can go down your legs if that feels appropriate. But for now, it feels really, really nice. And we're just trying to create a little bit of movement under the skin. It's harder or soft as you like. The body can cope with this. Arms can even get into shoulders if the shoulders are tight. But work with what works for you. 10 seconds. Great for digestion. Have a little weird but super fun. Five, four, three, two, and one. And lastly, I'm going to finish up with some super, some spinal rolls. So soft knees and knees. And I'm just trying to very much now segment the spine, softening the shoulders, belly to spine, and I'm just rolling. And even now, the range in my back has just changed significantly from when I started. Like I almost feel like I could go over into a full wheel. I won't. But I feel like even here, like I'm feeling really nice and loose now through that area. Take your time. So we come forward with the pelvis. Yeah. And then we push with the belly and then the chest and then the chin. stay doing that all day that felt so good in my body and just lastly still a little bit of shoulder movement which also of course moves to the rest of the body so backwards and forwards beautiful and just finish with a little bit of a shake however that is a little jump around if it feels okay. Again, everyone's back's gonna be different. Just loosening it up. Oh. So yeah, that's um, a little bit of movement. Um, I said when uh, specifically back is locked up, everyone's gonna be different. I just want you to uh, remember in your mind that a little bit of movement is perfectly fine and okay when we are locking up. Remember, like increases like. So if we are locked up and we keep it all locked up and stiff, it's just going to get more locked up and stiff. So when we rest, when we uh, get back pain or it becomes stiff and locked up, say thank you, so that you can take the lesson from what it's trying to teach us. Okay, everything is trying to teach us something, um, and it generally comes from when we've been doing too much, or we're stressed, or we're facing financial issues, or we're holding onto too much emotion, tension stuff we haven't um, allowed ourselves to feel and it'll get locked up there. And our usual response is to get pissed off and angry, but can we come at it with compassion and kindness and then work to creating this neural mapping that sends the message from the brain to the lower back that yes, it's okay to move, I'm kind to you today. And it will heal so much quicker, I promise. Um, oh, trust me, I've been there for 10 years where I was locked up in bed for three days because I couldn't move. Now, as soon as, I, as it goes, and it does every now and then, I straight away just go, thank you. Okay, we're gonna be kind to you today. Um, and my mantra is my back is well, my back is well, my back is well. And it heals, I can guarantee you tomorrow, it's gonna to be so much more mobile. So let me know how you go with that one. I just wanted to share.